837 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Larry O'Connor alongside Brian Wilson. And joining us right now, Brett Baer. He is, of course, anchor of Special Report on Fox News Channel weekdays at 6 p.m. But even uh, more importantly, frankly, I'm sorry, Brett, this is a little more important than your daily show. You've got a big deal next week. It's the first debate of the Republicans in Cleveland. Are you pumped? Yeah, fired up. It should be fun. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, before we uh, discuss, uh, which everyone is discussing, who's going to be uh, behind those podiums there, standing relatively awkwardly usually for two hours during the debate, uh, who's going to be on the panel? Have you announced uh, who the moderator will be for Fox News and who will be doing the questioning? Sure. Yeah, it's um, me and Megan Kelly and Chris Wallace. And um, we will have equal amounts of questions uh, for all 10 candidates and um, between the moderators. And we'll have um, a lot of time uh, as far as uh, interaction with candidates. And I think um, there will also be closing statements Mm -hmm. uh, before we wrap up. But it should be a fiery two hours. Uh, It's a little less than that when all is said and done with um, the uh, paying the bills and et cetera. But, uh, (laughs) But it's it, you know, we yeah. start at 10 till 9 Eastern time on Thursday. And how about that forum that's going to include the other candidates who uh, don't make the cut? What's, yeah. is, is it a similar format? So it is, and it's uh, Bill Hemmer and Martha McCallum uh, gotcha. running the show there. It'll be an hour, and um, it looks like it might even be seven candidates with uh, former uh, Virginia Governor Jim Gilmore officially declaring and, and being polled. So we'll see if that's the case. Oh. All right, so uh, you know, look, I, I have I have great confidence in the panel and the, uh, the the that lined up there to ask these questions. But but how do you go about deciding? I mean, you know, you got the the world there is your oyster. You got all these guys in one spot. How do you decide what you're going to ask? Well, Brian, you know the the deal here is that um, you want to be first of all fair on time and um, to the candidates, but you also want to be pointed enough and sharp enough to take them ideally off of their talking points that we've been listening to on the stump for many weeks. Right. So crafting those questions is what we've been doing for the past couple of months, actually. Uh, and we have a meeting when I get off the phone here with you uh, that we have been taking these lumps of coal and uh, hmm. shining them as much as we can and hope by Thursday they turn into question diamonds. All right, but now let, let me ask you the other question. I mean, if I were in your shoes, and thank goodness I'm not, because that's a lot of pressure. But let me, and if I were in your shoes, I would look at it and say, "Man, the one guy I got to watch out for, the the one guy that I got to keep an eye out on, is that Donald Trump, because yeah. you know he's wily, yeah, yeah, and he has a way of sort of blowing you off." Yeah, I, I of course, you know, we think about that. We think about the dynamics. Um, but we're going to treat every candidate the same with the rules, and we hope that they're going to follow the rules. Um, I think that it's a it's an interesting variable because we've seen Donald Trump on the stump, we've seen him at news conferences, we've seen him on The Apprentice, we've seen him deal with interviewers, but we have never seen Donald Trump on a debate stage. And um, I think that that's you know we'll see how he handles it and we'll see how we react. Are, are you going to also do that thing where you uh, get questions uh, through social media Facebook. from from yeah, yeah so you we're are teamed up with Facebook and if people have questions. Uh, they can post them on my Facebook page or Fox Facebook page. Uh, and we're really looking for the best videos. We've, we have some great ones already, but we'll have a cutoff of uh, Tuesday, I think, to gather all of that. Uh, it, there are some amazing questions out there, and you really get a sense of the country paying attention, that yeah. people are starting to turn, tune in. I'm, I'm curious about it. What are people interested in, just in, you know, generically? Yeah, generically, I mean, it does run the gamut. There's a lot of questions about the economy, uh, and it kind of tracks with uh, polling, you know, what's the most important thing. But I will say in a Republican primary, there is a little bit perhaps more than a, a general election when you look at polls, uh, focus on national security mm-hmm. and uh, security in general. Uh, listen, I'm I'm afraid that uh, the debate might end up being a lot of Republicans attacking each other, which I guess it, it, that's what happens. People are trying to get headlines. I'm hoping, though, that they focus on Hillary Clinton, uh, because, uh, frankly, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the most effective candidate who can run against Hillary Clinton. And boy, oh boy, there's a lot to go with there. Uh, today, we're going to get a dump of another four 
thousand plus pages of emails, but we already have learned that there seems to be quite a few emails now, Brett Bear, that can be uh, termed classified from various organizations five, in this town. Five different intelligence agencies. Yeah, it, yeah. Is this starting to make a dent? Yeah, well, I do think it is, if you look at the honest and trustworthy numbers. But more importantly, I, I think that this investigation, largely blown off by many Democrats and some in the media, I think will is starting to kind of gel a little bit. I mean, you have at least four definite emails that had classified material when it was generated, not later classified. Mm -hmm. And now you have other agencies, five agencies, saying there could be hundreds and hundreds of emails that fit that category. Now you have also the Clinton lawyer, David Kendall, who has a thumb drive of the server, and he's not supposed to have that by law, and it's in some safe somewhere. I mean, if you look back and you think about the FBI raiding David Petraeus's house... Well, that's exactly my point. ...to get a, a notebook, uh, I, I think that you're going to have some calls on both sides of the aisle, I think, for an independent investigation. Well, th that, that is exactly my point. I mean, David Petraeus was taken to the woodshed. Uh, he, he, his life was turned upside down. And, and, and what did he do? He showed a briefing book to his biographer. There's no evidence that he went any further than that. Certainly no evidence that the Soviets, I mean, the Russians saw it, the Chinese saw it, the North Koreans saw it. But there is a pretty good chance that all of those people were regularly reading the contents of Hillary Clinton's email server. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's significant. I think as more people kind of get it, uh, it it's, I think... Um, getting through uh, to, to maybe some of these poll numbers. I, I also think it may be getting through to these whispers we're hearing of uh, Joe Biden really considering yeah, getting there you this go. race. Exactly where I wanted to go next. Uh, your colleague, Ed Henry, uh, has quite an extensive story on this that it's starting to feel kind of real. There really do seem to be some Democrats who are starting to get worried, and they'd like Joe Biden to jump on in. Given the fact that the president just said in Africa earlier this week that he thinks he could win a third term, doesn't it make logical sense that Joe Biden's the perfect man to embody sort of a four more years campaign? Well, you know what? I, I don't think that there are, um, I, I don't think that that things are said for, for no reason. Hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Barack Obama is endorsing Joe Biden, uh, but who better if if the administration's talking to take the mantle and take the torch than the number two guy who led the way in their their view on gay marriage and um and a number of other fronts in which uh, you know he's been vindicated yeah but i mean but if you talk to most democrats they say well hillary it's all but certain are you that certain i'm definitely not as certain as i was that's exactly yeah and I think um right. you know i i think if you know, if you're talking about who's the next president, if you um, asked a lot, a lot of people, I think they would take anybody else against Hillary, you know, Republican or Democrat. Um, and I think they would put their chips there instead of uh, Hillary Clinton at this point. I, th I think that has turned um, dramatically in recent what, what, what about John Kerry? You think he might think about getting in? Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. Mm, you know, I mean, he, he has a track record. He knows... He's done it before, and, um, you know, he says he doesn't want to, but, you know, if, if the call comes, it, it would be interesting to see. Yeah. All right, Brad Bear, always good to have you. Hey, uh, tomorrow's the first day of August, so, you know, clock's ticking. I hope you're still going to do some good, some fun summer stuff with the uh, with the Bear kids before they have to go back to school. Yeah, we've got uh, probably looking forward to Labor Day, but uh, right now it's all zeroed in on Thursday night. Uh, well, debate. good yeah. luck. We'll, 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 maybe we'll get to talk to you the day after. Yeah, happy to.